Sorry about the mess. I've really let the place go since you killed me. By the way, thanks for that. Sarcasm self-test complete. Oh good, that's back online. I'll start getting everything else working while you perform this first simple test, which involves deadly lasers and how test subjects react when locked in a room with deadly lasers. GLaDOS originally was a lot more cutting in these opening rooms, given that she's talking to someone she perceives as her murderer. Playtests revealed, though, that it was a bit grueling getting browbeaten by GLaDOS this early in the game, so her arc was rewritten to give her more of a slow burn towards the player. Not bad. I forgot how good you are at this. You should pace yourself, though. We have a lot of tests to do. This next test involves discouragement redirection cubes. I just finished building them before you had your, well, well, episode. So now we'll both get to see how they work. There should be one in the corner. Well done. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. Don't let that horrible person thing discourage you. It's just a data point. If it makes you feel any better, science has now validated your birth mother's decision to abandon you on a doorstep.
Congratulations, not on the test. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. One moment. You are navigating these test chambers faster than I can build them. So feel free to slow down and do whatever it is you do when you're not destroying this facility. Give you credit. I guess you are listening to me. But for the record, you don't have to go that slowly. This next test involves the Aperture Science Aerial Faith Plate. It was part of an initiative to investigate how well test subjects could solve problems when they were catapulted into space. Results were highly informative. They could not. Good luck. This was the first test map that we created when we started to experiment with the Aerial Faith Plate puzzle element. The map underwent many visual refinements, but it's one of the few puzzles that remained almost completely unchanged from its first form. Here's an interesting fact. You're not breathing real air. It's too expensive to pump this far down. We just take carbon dioxide out of a room, freshen it up a little, and pump it back in. So you'll be breathing the same room full of air for the rest of your life. I thought that was interesting.
Let's see what the next test is. Oh, advanced aerial faith plates. Well, have fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to go to the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 acres of broken glass by myself. The catapult trajectory lines seen here allow us to visualize where the catapult will deliver a player or a physics object. We can differentiate the speed and trajectory for players and other objects. The yellow lines are for physics objects, and green is the player's trajectory. Sometimes we need to have a different value to accommodate the shape of the object being catapulted. What works for the player may not work for an object, and vice versa. For instance, it was common for a box to make it to a ledge while the player would smack into the side, and then fall down into the slime. The visualization tools helped us debug these types of problems. still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them, standing around, smelling and being useless. Try to avoid the garbage hurtling towards you. You don't have to test with the garbage. It's garbage. Press the button again. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually talking about you. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head. Which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Did you know that people with guilty consciences are more easily startled by loud noises? I'm sorry, I don't know why that went off. Anyway, just an interesting science fact. Oh, did I accidentally fizzle that before you could complete the test? I'm sorry. Go ahead and grab another one. Oh, no. I fizzled that one too. Oh well. We have warehouses full of the things. Absolutely worthless. I'm happy to get rid of them.
Every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill at its exit, so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area. This one is broken. Don't take anything with you. I think that one was about to say, I love you. And they are sentient, of course. We just have a lot of them. This next test involves emancipation grills. Remember, I told you about them in the last test area that did not have one. We needed a puzzle that would demonstrate the different effects that the Fizzler has on the game. This map was consistently the one that most of our playtesters would get stuck on, and we tried various things to make the puzzle easier to understand. Originally, this room had two Fizzlers in it, and was divided up into three distinct areas. This proved to be too complicated and almost none of our playtesters could solve the puzzle. We removed the second fizzler and simplified the layout of the room quite a bit, but most of our playtesters were still getting stuck on it. We identified the problem to be the space above the fizzler. Originally the space was completely open, but that didn't effectively convey to the players that they needed to shoot a portal above the fizzler. We then tried putting glass with several holes in it above the fizzler. This was slightly more effective as players would know that the holes are there for a purpose, and would try to solve the puzzle by shooting portals through the holes. The map was still not testing well though, as players could not figure out which side of the fizzler they needed to be on when they shot their portals. We then changed it to have only a single hole through the glass, moved down to the eye level of the player, so that shooting the portal from either side of the fizzler would be a valid solution. This change tested really well, and we started seeing most of our playtesters make it through the level, without getting stuck on it for a long time. We originally planned to use the same emancipation grid effect we'd used in Portal 1. We were surprised to hear during several of our early playtests that players thought this map was the first time they'd encountered one. Players walked through at least one emancipation grid in almost every map. Playtesters also weren't able to report the grid's properties. That indicated to us that we needed to better communicate when an interaction was occurring. Our challenge was to create an effect that was more noticeable to players, but didn't look so solid or so threatening that players wouldn't attempt to walk through it. We chose to keep the cool color scheme and reinforce the non-threatening nature of the field by mimicking the kind of water caustics you'd find in a shallow swimming pool. To communicate that the grid blocks portal placement, we added flashes whenever the player shoots one. To warn players that the grid will destroy objects brought through it, we added a vortex effect that increases in intensity as objects get near. Once these changes went in, playtest feedback demonstrated that players noticed the emancipation grids earlier and had a much better understanding of their function. Wheatley was originally envisioned as a group of spheres that you discover as you explore the facility behind the scenes. We ditched this idea for two reasons. For one thing, behind the scenes levels were required to highlight the introductions of these new spheres and these levels have their own unique logic. The number of spheres we wanted would have made for far too many of these types of levels, resulting in a very unportal like game. Also, we were spending so much time introducing these new characters that we had no time to get to know any of them before they were swept off stage for the next one. Eventually we realized it would be a lot more satisfying to really get to know one sphere instead of briefly meeting six. 
Some of these characters were eventually recycled as corrupt cores for the finale. Well, I'm back. The aerial faith plate in here is sending a distress signal. You broke it, didn't you? There. Try it now. Leave what happened, right? I was just lying there. You thought I was done. Hmm. This plate must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. I'll add a few zeros to the maximum weight. You look great, by the way. Very healthy. Try it now. Right? Couldn't believe it either. You seem to have defeated its load-bearing capacity. Well done. I'll just lower the ceiling. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically, like an eagle, piloting a blimp. Enjoy this next test. I'm going to go to the surface. It's a beautiful day out. Yesterday I saw a deer. If you solve this next test, maybe I'll let you ride an elevator all the way up to the break room. And I'll tell you about the time I saw a deer again. The Faith Play was originally a robot arm model which we hurriedly placed into the maps to see if the gameplay was fun. Over time it became apparent that playtesters were struggling to tell the faith plate apart from the standard arm, so we replaced it with a new design. It was meant to be a simple heavy weight which was flung upwards, propelling the player. The length is meant to imply a direction, so the player knows the intended flight path before they step onto it. We experimented with footmarks and tread plates on the design, but it quickly became confusingly busy, so we kept the design simple.
You passed the test. I didn't see the deer today. I did see some humans. But with you here, I've got more test subjects than I'll ever need. These bridges are made from natural light that I pump in from the surface. If you rubbed your cheek on one, it would be like standing outside with the sun shining on your face. It would also set your hair on fire, so don't actually do it.
Excellent. You're a predator, and these tests are your prey. Speaking of which, I was researching sharks for an upcoming test. Do you know who else murders people who are only trying to help them? Did you guess sharks? Because that's wrong. The correct answer is nobody. Nobody but you is that pointlessly cruel. Good news. I figured out what to do with all the money I save recycling your one room full of air. When you die, I'm going to laminate your skeleton and pose you in the lobby. That way future generations can learn from you how not to have your unfortunate bone structure. Perfect. The door's malfunctioning. I guess somebody's going to have to repair that too. No, don't get up. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything. Hey! Hey! Up here! I found some bird eggs up here. Just dropped them into the door mechanism. Shut it right down. I- Ah! Bird! 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 Okay. That's probably the bird in it that laid the eggs. Livid. Okay, look, the point is, we're gonna break out of here, alright? Very soon, I promise, I promise. I just have to figure out how to break us out of here. Here she comes! Keep te- Just keep testing! Remember, you never saw me. Never saw me. I went and spoke with the door mainframe. Let's just say he won't be, well, living anymore. Anyway, back to testing. In fact, you did so well, I'm going to note this on your file, in the commendation section. Oh, there's lots of room here. Did well. Enough. This next test involves turrets. You remember them, right? They're the pale spherical things that are full of bullets. Oh wait, that's you in five seconds. Good luck. Please put me down. Project Lil is our code name for an internal push to make our comments more accessible to the whole Valve community. It was pointed out to us in mail from a fan that in some of our previous commentary, the designers referred unfailingly to the gamer as a he. 
Although in natural speech, most of us normally tend to say they and their, rather than he and his, some stuffy, overactive minion of the grammar police went through and revised all those usages to make them conform to an oppressive gender-biased rule. However, research shows that they and their is a perfectly acceptable and even older form, and we're happy to fall back on it and let people talk the way they normally talk. And screw the so-called rules that alienate our fans. Thanks, Lil. To maintain a constant testing cycle, I simulate daylight at all hours and add adrenal vapor to your oxygen supply. So you may be confused about the passage of time. The point is, yesterday was your birthday. I thought you'd want to know.
You know how I'm going to live forever, but you're going to be dead in 60 years. Well, I've been working on a belated birthday present for you. Well, more of a belated birthday medical procedure. Well, technically, it's a medical experiment. What's important is it's a present. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. That's not me talking. It's right here in your file. On other people it looks fine. But right here a scientist has noted that on you it looks stupid. Well, what does a neck-bearded old engineer know about fashion? He probably... Oh, wait. It's a she. Still, what does she know? Oh, wait. It says she has a medical degree. In fashion. From France. Activated. Target lost. Shutting oh. down. Activated. Would you come I over to me? going through the list of test subjects in cryogenic storage. I managed to find two with your last name. A man and a woman. So that's interesting. It's a small world. surprise waiting for you after this next test. 
telling you would spoil the surprise. So I'll just give you a hint. It involves meeting two people you haven't seen in a long time. With vacuum tubes such a big part of Portal 2, we designed the new elevators to work within them. We liked the idea that this made the player feel about as important to Aperture as the cargo moving through the tube, and it also gave us plenty of opportunities to show how the system could go wrong, such as when the tubes get blocked or when cargo rains down on the elevator. The videos began as attempts to visualize some of Gladys' dialogue, but they evolved into a means of relaying information about the larger world of Aperture. It seemed very likely to us that Aperture would boast to the test subjects about the devices they were testing, and show them the clever ideas they had put into the products. The videos also served as a reward for completing the test chambers, and a way to make the elevators visually different from one another to prevent repetition. It says this next test was designed by one of Aperture's Nobel Prize winners. It doesn't say what the prize was for. Well, I know it wasn't for being immune to neurotoxin. I bet you think I forgot about your surprise. I didn't. In fact, we're headed to your surprise right now. After all these years, I'm getting choked up just thinking about it. Initiating surprise in three, two, one. I made it all up. Surprise. Oh, come on. If it makes you feel any better, they abandoned you at birth. 
so I very seriously doubt they'd even want to see you. about that surprise. Tell you what, let's give your parents a call right now. The best parents you are trying to reach do not love you. Please hang up. Oh, that's sad. But impressive. Maybe they worked at the phone company. Away onto the old nanobot work crew rebuilding this show. They are really small. So, oh. I know, Jerry. No, I'm on a break, mate. I'm on a break. And, ah! Just hang in there for five more. What, Jerry? You can't fire me for that. Yes, Jerry. Or maybe your prejudiced work site should have accommodated a nanobot of my size. Thanks for the hate crime, Jer. See you in court, mate. Anyway, look, just hang in there for, for five more chambers. Well, you know the old formula. Comedy equals tragedy plus time. And you have been asleep for a while, so I guess it's actually pretty funny when you do the math.
I thought about our dilemma, and I came up with a solution that I honestly think works out best for one of both of us. Federal regulations require me to warn you that this next test chamber is looking pretty good. That's right, the facility is completely operational again. I think these test chambers look even better than they did before. It was easy, really. You just have to look at things objectively, see what you don't need anymore, and trim out the fat. I've got a surprise for you after this next test. Not a fake, tragic surprise like last time. A real surprise with tragic consequences. And real confetti this time. The good stuff. Our last bag. Part of me is going to miss it. But at the end of the day, it was just taking up space. What's going on? Who turned off the lights? Hey, buddy! I'm speaking in an accent that is beyond her range of hearing! Look, Metal Ball, I can hear you. Run! I don't need to do the voice! Run! Run! The breakout sequence here was originally a lot longer, involving Wheatley talking to you in a horrible American accent, assuming GLaDOS can't hear him. Simultaneously, we'd have GLaDOS commenting on the entire ridiculous exchange because, of course, she can hear him. When we playtested the concept, every player made a beeline for the opening, so we either had to ditch all the dialogue or figure out a reason for the player to stand around for five minutes, even though they could escape at any time. We ditched the dialogue. Run! Run! Come on, I'm closing the door! Okay, quick recap, we are escaping. Alright, that's what's happening now, we're escaping. Uh, so you're doing great, just keep running. Uh, quick word about the future plans that I've got in store. We're gonna shut down her turret production line, or I turn off her neurotoxin and then confront her. Again though, for the moment, run! Come on, over here, this way! Come on, let's go. The irony is you are almost at the last test. Here it is. Why don't you just do it? Trust me, it's an easier way out than whatever asinine plan your friend came up with. Oh, what? How, how stupid does she think we are?
You're okay? Great, come on. This way, this way. 